Now that the architectural model is unwrapped, you turn your attention to a technical model, the car. If you need to catch up, use the file named uvunwrappingcar.max. The car is made of a main body and four wheels. The wheels are instances of one another, so you only need to unwrap one. You'll start with the body. As always, being for modeling purposes or for general texturing, you need a lot of reference pictures. The internet is a good place to start, but so is going out there in the world and snapping pictures. Alternatively, you can find what you need in reduced models. In this case, I took a series of pictures from a model car, 1 40th of scale, if I recall. I then organized them inside a square yellow area of 1024 by 1024 pixels. I did a bit of editing at the tire levels to get better sidewalls and a decent looking tread pattern. Ultimately, I created a few additional markings such as a racing number and racing stripes. All this to say that yet again, it is a case where the final bitmap is ready before the unwrapping process has begun. An alternative approach would have been to arrange the bitmap after you have packed the UVs, but that's not what we will do here. You'll start with the body of the car. Go to the material editor and locate the material named car. It's a multi-sub material that is designed to account for both the metal and glass parts of the car's body. It's already applied to the car, but you need to connect the bitmap to the appropriate diffuse channel. Close the material editor when done. Double click the car body to select it and its children, the four wheels. Isolate the selection and take a look at the car. This is not the best conceivable 3D model of a car, but it will do just fine for our needs. Select the main body and apply an unwrap UVW modifier to it. Open the UV editor and display the car bitmap in it. Next, you need to separate the clusters and lay them in the UV space, matching what is top, side, front or back. You could try and use one of the automated unwrap tools in the mapping menu. For example, select all the faces that make your model. Using normal mapping, you can separate clusters based on back front mapping, left-right mapping, or even box mode, among others. You can also use the flatten feature that separate clusters based on face angles. All of these tools will require adjustments and stitching before the clusters work properly. It is sometimes best to forego these automated tools and do the work manually. Click the Reset UVWs button to go back to the original UV layout. Here, selecting faces may be a bit more difficult than it was with the architectural model. So instead of painstakingly selecting faces, you will instead cut the model in pieces to separate the clusters. This is done at the edge sub-object level. It's like taking a pair of scissors and ripping through a piece of fabric. As you will see later, this makes the selection of polygons infinitely easier. You will start with the cluster representing the top of the car. You need to select all the edges that make the boundaries of that area. You could arguably hold control and select those edges, but there's a much better way. You can use the point-to-point -point edge selection feature. This way, you can click on two vertices separated by an edge loop, and all the edges on that loop get selected in the process. You can then keep on going until you right-click to cancel the point-to-point -point selection process. Once you have the edges selected, go to the Peel rollout and click the Convert Edge Selection to Seams button. 
The edges turn blue, indicating the newly created seam that you will use later as a cluster boundary. You don't always need to select the edges first and then convert them to a seam. You can also use the point-to-point -point seams feature. However, if you make a mistake, you'd have to undo or edit the seams using the Edit Seams feature. By Alt-dragging, you can remove seams from the selection. To be on the safe side, you may find it good practice to select edges first and then convert them to seams. Once you have the boundary in place, selecting the appropriate polygons becomes infinitely easier. All you need to do is switch to Polygon Mode select one polygon within the boundary, and then use the Expand Face Selection to Seams feature. From that point on, the process is similar to what you have done with the architectural model. Apply a planar mapping from top, Z-axis, and then exit the planar mapping tool. In the UV editor, move the cluster away from the working area. Select and move all the other polygons as well. Adjust the cluster using the Freeform tool as you have learned before. Work at the polygon, edge or vertex level to fit the cluster to the reference texture. Make sure the cluster is adjusted around the glass areas. When you're done, you can work on a different cluster, such as the side of the car. To keep movie length reasonable, proceed to the next part for that procedure.